Good morning, everybody. Today is the 235th birthday of Tennessean David Crockett. I thought to celebrate his birthday today, we could do a little tour of the, of the exhibit that we have here at Discovery Park. Of course, we have a statue of David Crockett and a whole entire cabin village. Um, we have um, a lot of David Crockett uh, throughout the park and the museum, but we have a special exhibit just about him. And so I'm going to share with you 10 things that you'll discover about David Crockett in the exhibit at Discovery Park of America. First of all, I'm standing here at our reproduction of the Liberty Bell here in Liberty Hall. We have an exhibit about John Tanner um, and his incredible contribution to the state. And we have um, an exhibit about Fats Everett, another politician uh, that is uh, really interesting and contributed a lot to the area. But for today, we're talking about David Crockett. So come on in and let's uh, look a little bit at what we have here about David Crockett. Uh, first of all, one of the most uh, important things that's applicable to me, because I'm from West Tennessee, is David Crockett's life while he was living here in West Tennessee. Uh, he's one of the uh, few celebrities and well-known Tennesseans who lived in both East, Middle, and West Tennessee, uh, the three sections of our state. But he came here in 1822 when he settled on some land that his father-in-law had been given for his service in the Revolutionary War. He settled right in this area, Discovery Park of America is up here, and so he very much was close to this area. He hunted on and around Real Foot Lake, uh, which was still relatively new um, during that time. Um, and you can see he visited Jackson a lot. He would take his, uh, he would take his animal furs and, and the meat that he killed to Jackson to trade. He spent a lot of time in Memphis. He was very good friends with the Memphis mayor um, at the time, Marcus Winchester, who has a fascinating story in his own right. Um, and so West Tennessee was a really important part um, of David Crockett's life and career. He was here from 1822 until he departed for the Alamo in 1835. So that's point number one. Okay, the second interesting thing about David Crockett that you'll discover um, here at Discovery Park of America is that David Crockett eventually became enemies with Andrew Jackson, who was the president of the United States and also from Tennessee. Uh, during that time, there were a lot of Tennesseans um, up in Washington in power, and David Crockett was in many cases a fly in their ointment because he didn't just follow along and do what they expected him to do. He voted the way he wanted to vote, and oftentimes that was against the direction that they wanted him to go. One area in particular that, that Crockett was passionate about was he was not in favor um, of Andrew Jackson's 1830 bill um, which eventually led to the Trail of Tears. Um, David Crockett uh, very much stood that against it, vocally voted against it, and he was the only Tennessean um, in Congress to vote against that. So that's number two. We've got an, another really interesting one here. Um, in number three, we have a reprint of um, a almanac. After David Crockett's death, he became even more famous than he had in his lifetime. Um, a series of almanacs were printed for decades afterwards that included his uh, larger-than-life feats, and those, those in a big way created to the myth that became uh, David Crockett. Uh, they, they were called uh, the Davy Crockett Almanacs, um, and they featured the, uh, one, of, one of them uh, on the cover featured what became uh, the famous Davy Crockett uh, hat, which was the coonskin cap. So in reality, and this is number three or four, I've already lost track. In reality, let's say it's number three. Um, in reality, David Crockett really didn't um, often wear a coonskin cap any more than anyone else. You're going to see in a minute what he actually looked like, and, and it may surprise you that he didn't look a lot like what a lot of people think he looked like. So we're going to move over here. David Crockett's family, he had a big family, and they stayed in the area. So number four is all the uh, siblings and, and children and stepchildren and cousins and nieces. And if you're around here, you hear quickly, oh, I'm related to David Crockett because he had so many children and they had so many children. Um, in fact, um, one of his sons, 
John Wesley Crockett, whose feature here actually ran for and won Davy Crockett's uh, congressional seat after uh, he passed away. So um, he later on moved down to New Orleans, uh, where he was an editor of a young age um, and was buried and filled with a lot of David Crockett's uh, children and stepchildren and descendants. In, in one of David Crockett's final letters, uh, it was actually the last letter to his daughter, he signed it, Do not be uneasy about me, I am among my friends, farewell, David Crockett. And I thought that was a really uh, interesting statement for him to make because one thing, while David Crockett's uh, he, he traveled a lot, so he wasn't necessarily the best father, and he certainly wasn't the best husband. Um, he was away from home a lot. Um, he did not make a lot of money uh, during his lifetime, but he was a great friend. Um, he was good friends with Sam Houston. Uh, he, when he went to the Alamo, he had friends there, and he easily could have uh, snuck out and left when they knew that they were up against all odds in the Alamo, but he didn't. He stuck around, and he, uh, he was very brave, and he fought to the, to the bitter end with his friends. And throughout Crockett's life and career, uh, there are great examples of his relationships with people that he stuck by, um, that he supported, and that um, he uh, helped uh, through their lives. So we're going to go over here. I think it's interesting, what did David Crockett look like? Uh, if David Crockett had lived just a few more years, we would have a photograph of him or, or multiple photographs of him because photography uh, suddenly uh, became in vogue and having photographs of famous people was uh, very, very uh, much something that everybody was doing. Uh, just a few years later, we have photos of Andrew Jackson and James K. Polk, but we don't have any photographs of David Crockett. We have a number of portraits that were painted, of course, um, a person's images in the eye of the beholder, and so a lot of these look a lot look different. Uh, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what did David Crockett look like. An interesting thing that I think was interesting is the fact that he was very much in control of his image and what it looked like. So look a certain way. So um, David Crockett, especially this painting right here, he actually went out into the streets of Washington with John Gatsby Chapman, who painted this painting. Um, and looked for these dogs because he wanted dogs that looked like the kind of dogs that he would have in Tennessee. Um, he, he was not happy with the way the painting was turning out. There was something missing, he was telling um, Gatsby, who, Gatsby Chapman, who this is a portrait of him. He actually wrote later in his own memoirs that, that Crockett came in one day and said, I've got it. What we're going to do is I'm going to wave my hat like I'm waving to the neighbors. And so Chapman said, you got it. John Gatsby Chapman said, you got it. And that's the painting that we ended up with today. Um, it's uh, uh, copies of it um, exist, but the original was actually burned in a fire um, in Austin, Texas, when the state capitol burned. Um, we're down to number eight, or up to number eight, however you want to look at it. Um, and, um, David Crockett is very well known for having um, died at the Alamo. His death at the Alamo ended up uh, triggering even more fame than he would have had otherwise. He was a lot like Elvis and James Dean and Marilyn Monroe. When you die early um, in a tragic uh, situation, it really does um, make you even more famous. And so um, another comparison uh, to Elvis um, would be that there were David Crockett sightings for decades to come. His son even worked with Washington to send somebody down to Mexico to investigate a situation uh, where people said they saw David Crockett working in a mine. And so um, that, David, that David Crockett sighting ended up, like all the other ones, uh, to be false because he really did die um, at the Alamo. Uh, there's, there's a controversy over did he fight to the bitter end? Was he captured and then killed with um, other uh, a few other uh, fighters there, but ultimately, with all the smart people that have investigated, the real answer is we'll never really know exactly how he died, but we do know that he was killed at the Alamo and he was uh, burned on a funeral pyre um, with the rest of uh, those who were fighting at the Alamo. Number nine, David Crockett's gun. That was pretty famous, almost like uh, Roy Rogers' horse trigger. Uh, Davy Crockett's gun was named Old Betsy. 
this is um, not actually the gun. The gun's very valuable, but this is um, a replica that folks that visit here to Discovery Park of America can check out. And now that brings us to number 10. One of the things that I think is really interesting is that David Crockett was one of the very first celebrities to actually have a tagline. Um, he said it, and then from then on, it became a huge part of his career. He wrote it at the bottom of um, he wrote it at the bottom of posters of him and lithographs that were sold. Uh, he would sign his book with with that saying, um, and we have that just over the doorway here. Number ten would be David Crockett's timeline, uh, David Crockett's buzzwords, be always sure you were right, then go ahead. That was uh, his tagline that he used all the time, and it continued to be associated with him. In fact, a little person, Tom Thumb, when he had a little carriage made, he had go ahead, in quotes, written on the side of his carriage. So it became a really popular uh, buzzword that was used frequently. And the last thing I want to leave you, here's a picture um, of David Crockett um, I think this is probably one of the uh, most, the closest to what he really looked like. This was painted by Chester Harding in 1834, shortly before uh, David Crockett's death. So um, we're, all of us here at Discovery Park are really excited about David Crockett's 235th birthday. We had more than 1,000 people here on Saturday celebrating with programs and, and all different uh, types of activities and incredible play by a Broadway star, Bart Chateau. You can see all of that on our website and our blog post. But also, make, a, make your own plans to come here to visit Discovery Park. We have a lot of fun things going on uh, this fall and, and during the Christmas season. So when you're here, make sure you come out here to Liberty Hall um, and check out this incredible David Crockett exhibit. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me this morning, and I hope everyone has a fantastic David Crockett birthday.